So in this video, I'm going to talk through all the sort of data sets that you're going to be working with. And I'm also going to show you like a couple of quick tips um, for how I'm going to teach the software and, and it should and how it should help you learn it. Um, as well as like, I guess, you know, how you guys can use it internally and, and remember what you did. Um, so all the data that we have up here, we have params, which are empty uh, geometry. So all these black uh, geometry elements are empty until you fill it with something. Um, and then you have what's called primitive. So primitive, it is um, like a generator of data, but you can either override it or you can use it as a conduit to pass through data from one point to another. We'll get there. That probably doesn't make any sense to you yet. But uh, then you can input, and then there's some utility stuff that helps you like read information in different ways. Um, <clears throat> so under math, you uh, have a lot of functions here that will modify that data in terms of like you know creating formulas and stuff like that, plus um, rocking domains, like establishing a domain that is a boundary for something that you can work within. Um, that's that's kind of what that's going to be. Um, sets is about like how you organize and structure your information um, and, and ways to change it and patternize it and all that other kind of cool stuff. Um, then vector, of course, is going to be your point and, and direction based uh, information. So all of your planar um, orientation stuff is all in here. Um, we don't really use the field stuff um, and all of your point and vector stuff is going to be in here too. Um, curve, surface, and mesh. They're all going to generate information, uh, gener sorry, generate geometry. Um, but not just generating geometry. Remember I said that um, we are going to construct geometry, and then we're going to deconstruct geometry, and then we're going to reconstruct it into something else. Okay, so every single one of these tabs has panels that create geometry and deconstruct geometry. Okay, so you're going to see that not only can we create circles, but now we can look at all of the data that is generated by that circle and use it for something else. And that's what the analysis panel is for. So there's an analysis panel in curve and surface and mesh. That's really important. Okay, so this is going to be all of our kind of like deconstruct stuff. Um, intersections uh, is almost purely inter. Um, almost purely analytical. So there's a lot of that kind of like where you can measure where things are clashing and then use that information for something else. Um, and then transform is, is again, going to sort of deconstruct and perform an operation on that at the same time, like moving something. Um, so you're going to have to think a little bit differently about what it means to, to run a command in Grasshopper, because like when I say something like a move, um, it's really not just moving it. It's creating a copy in another location. Um, and whether or not you use the old information or the new information is important because you want your definition to be efficient. Um, but you'll, you'll understand a little bit more about what I mean by that in the future. But um, <clears throat> what I want to show you here that should help you is how you can find where these um, nodes came from. Okay, So I think it's uh, Control-Alt. Yeah. Control Alt and then click and hold on one of these nodes will show you where it came from. So if you ever if you ever go off on uh, like YouTube or something like that to try and learn something on your own and somebody uses this, this is how they did it. Um, so this will tell me that it's actually in the vector tab under the point panel. Easy. Um, if it's something that is inside of uh, one of these collapsed panels, it will actually open that for me and show me it. So. Um, yeah, oh, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't even pull one that was off of it. There we go. There you go. Um, it'll open it for you and show you. Okay. So, um, additionally, there are some other shortcuts that we're going to use a lot. Um, if you double click in the workspace, you can search, you can search for anything. Um, if I want to create a point, I can go to point and it didn't actually show that, uh, it didn't actually come up with that point. Because if, if you search for point, right, it comes up with a bunch of commands that include the word point, but not the one to construct a point. So unfortunately, sometimes, sometimes you need to know more about the actual command name. So in this case, it's construct point, right, and you'll find it there. 
Um, so it's not, I don't want you to use the search function too much at first, because I want you to understand the logic of where the different tool types are located, okay? Um, and then additionally, for um, certain like new tools that I'm using, I'll go through um, the definition and actually create like a name tag for you. Um, so you can track as you're listening to me, like where things came from without having to ask. So in this case, um, I would create a group around this thing. I hit, I hit control G. It's actually made for groups of like stuff like this and then you can string them together and, and understand like one idea versus another idea. Um, but I like to use it um, right here because I can create a name for this thing and just call it like vector point. And you'll know that that came from the vector tab under the point panel. Does that make sense? Okay. And then um, the other thing that I wanted to show you real quick is uh, the um, the actual node construction. So like right now the node shows PT, right? That's like a title for, for this node. Um, but if you right click and you go to this uh, little use application setting thing, you can change it from text to the icon or back to a custom name that I want to call. So I can call this base point and then it changes the name of it to base point instead. Okay. So these are all things that you at least need to know about because as I'm like building these definitions, I'm probably going to start doing it pretty rapid fire. Um, and then finally, uh, I mentioned that you guys are going to be using these um, number sliders like a lot. Um, so what's cool is the, the, the search feature will actually let us take a shortcut to get to a number slider. So if I wanted to do a slider from negative 10 to 10, all I have to do is type negative 10 is less than 10 and it will give me a slider from negative 10 to 10. It's different in the fact that um, this defaulted to three decimal places accuracy um, and this one did not. Um, but if you need to do that, you can just switch it from um, an integer to a real number, and it would do that for you. Okay. What questions do you have? No questions. Okay. So, um, cool. So what I'm going to do then um, is I'm going to close the book on just kind of this intro thing, and we're actually going to start developing some definitions using point grids and matrices and stuff like that. Okay.